Glory to God, glory to God. Good morning, friends. This is Morning Prayer Live coming to you from the beautiful island of Jamaica in the Caribbean. We are here at Axe Mission and uh, we broadcast right now from Galena in St. Mary, but our office is in Port Maria and Galena. Um, welcome you to join us each morning right here at 5 a.m. Central, 6 a.m. Eastern to participate in Morning Prayer Live. Good morning, Sister Jackie from Florida, Patricia Harper from London, Gail from the wonderful state of Ohio. Amen. And uh, then we see Tina. Um, Tina, I think Tina is in South Carolina. <laughs> I don't exactly remember. Um, Tina, um, you can give a shout out of your location. I, I, I don't remember that. I, I knew where you're from, but it just slips my mind. Um, Satasha from Aurora. Mary, thank you all for joining us this morning as we enjoy a beautiful song. Now, this morning's topic, I think, will kind of blow your mind. Chosen. And it's in quotes, chosen for a blessing. Have you ever thought about that? That you are chosen for a blessing. Specifically, God identified you. God handpicked you. God thought about you when you were not even thinking about being blessed. When you're not even thinking about moving into things <clears throat> that will provide for you. But God had his hand upon you. Well, let's um, enjoy this song. And then we'll come right back with Chosen for a Blessing. Yes. Hey, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 
You can't hear that song. Oh my goodness, I don't know. Okay, well, if you can't hear it, that doesn't make any sense for me to play, continue to play it. Wow. Okay, um, well, let me just move on. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do is, I'm going to refresh. Um, just join me right back. Uh, well, you know what, let me just move on. Um, I want to talk this morning about um, Chosen for... Uh, and I've got to figure out why you can't hear that song, and <laughs> that's going to be on my mind. But um, because I could hear it perfectly fine. Oh, Lord, I see why. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Good Lord. Heaven help us, Jesus. Heaven help us, Jesus. Guess what? I had something unplugged. Can <laughs> you imagine? <laughs> All right, um, I, I think I'm fine again with that, um, but I am going to, uh, Lord, I'm going to forego the song for the, for the moment <clears throat> and just um, continue with what we're doing, amen? And uh, maybe I'll just kind of redo some of it tomorrow morning if people miss out on, on what um, I'm talking about. Uh, Forgive me, I had one of my key cables unplugged and did not realize it. Thanks for the heads up, Gail and Tina. Um, but again, chosen for a blessing. Question I have for you. But before I go into that, I, I want to point something out. Um, many years ago, um, not too long ago, um, but a few years ago, there was a young lady, um, we called her Tash, not the same Tash over here in St. Mary. We called her, her name was Tash, and we, we had a computer lab um, in Kingston, and she would come in after school, she went to a holy childhood, and she would um, come in after school and use the facility, she was getting ready to do her um, SBAs for her final exams for school, for high school, and, and all of that. And what happened was that Tash um, went to, you know, the lab, we used the lab, we, we made it available to the kids in the inner city um, for free, and they would do their work, they would get their printings, they would do all they needed to do. And I remember, I mean, hundreds of kids used it. Uh, as a matter of fact, one uh, at one point, the U.S. Embassy, USAID, uh, provided us with funding to actually have staff that helped um, our, our young people in the community. And so, you know, again, hey, big up the U.S. Embassy in Kingston. We love you. You have been really um, favorable towards us. And um, I don't know the new staff there, but um, they have been really key in helping us do many things there in the Kingston area. Um, on, on, on the other hand, though, this young lady, she came in, like I said, with many others, uh, parents came by. We had different ceremonies uh, at one point. The then acting ambassador came down and we had a grand opening and you know many things happened. Uh, but hold on a second. Of all the people that came through, just like the ten lepers, of all the people that came through, this young lady was the only one that stopped for a moment. He wrote me a letter and in the letter she said, Thank you. Thank you for making something available that we couldn't afford. And she went on, you know, to elaborate on her gratitude. Well, recently something happened over here. And, and I've got to share it with you because it makes a significant impression on people like myself when we see this. Because many times the crowd doesn't do this. It's the individual and uh, if the crowd did it, how, how much more of a blessing it would be. <coughs> but this is just an individual, amen. And so one of my teenagers, um, a couple of years ago, migrated to the United States. A teenager, still a teenager, I think. And uh, when, when the young person left Jamaica, um, they, he, you know, they, were, they were in school, you know, and... Uh, so got up there and uh, sent me a note uh, recently and said, um, Pastor, I want to donate 
to the ministry in Jamaica. And, you know, it says something to me when a teenager and a teenage young man says, I want to give my money <laughs> to <a> church. <laughs> I want to give my money to a mission. Because I am sure there are many other things that this youngster could use um, his money on and, uh, and his money to do. And so he said, you know, Pastor, I want to do this, and this is what I'm going to do. I can't give the whole thing at once, but I'm going to give it in this, you know, this, you know, in this frequency. And so I, I, I received the first one maybe two months ago, and then last month I, re, you know, the ministry again received. And uh, I, I mean, it amazes me that a youngster can remember and then turn back and show gratitude. Remember the 10 lepers, one turned back <coughs> out of the 10 and showed that kind of gratitude. And I thank God for him and for those who have thought about it, you know, wherever you are and whatever you have done, that you have turned back to someone in your own life and you've said thank you when it was not necessarily a requirement, okay? It, it, it is a blessing to people when you stop for a moment and you say thanks hmm? to that person that got you your first job, to that individual. Maybe, maybe you've not thought about them, the person that did something for you when no one else was doing it for you. Get them a card, get them a little rose, do something, you know, your husband or your wife. Do something and say, you know, honey... <coughs> When, you know, you did this for me, I never really said anything about it, but thank you. And you do something to say thanks when it's not um, a requirement. It makes a big difference. Jesus had already um, imparted healing to the ten lepers. They were intended to walk away and go show themselves to the priest. But one of them decided to turn back. One of them decided to do something a little bit different and speak speak back to the Lord and say thank you and this youngster just I, I told I told him yesterday that he is indeed a faithful son because not many people look in, behind them and say you know I need to leave a blessing I need to do something um, a little you know a little more I need to say thanks and, uh, and not just, in his case, not just saying thanks, you know, um, with the thank you, but also financially supporting the work we do in our youth programs here in um, Jamaica. Thank you. I don't know if he's going to be watching today, but um, I want to say thank you to him and thank you to all of those that continue to be a blessing to Acts Mission Jamaica. But I want to talk about this blessing issue. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to talk about um, chosen. Uh, many times we run, we run into problems, you know, and I'm going to pray before I actually get into that message, but uh, I want you to consider something. Many times we get into issues and challenges and we get to the place where we, fi we figure we're on our last leg. Lord, I'm going to fail, fall, I'm going to, you know, I'm about to quit, I'm about to give up, because things are just not working out the way I intend them to work out in this situation. So, pretty much it's dead. Pretty much I, I don't have anywhere else to go, I have nothing else to do, and uh, I don't know, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, I don't know what else to do. Well, let me tell you this. Um, God is not unaware of your dilemma or your situation. And I'm going to share a, a story with you out of the scriptures. Why, I, why do I want to do that? Because there are principles, that there, there are teachings in the Old Testament and in the New Testament that are God's released revelation of his nature and his laws governing situations that you and I really need to get involved with. Amen? We really need to walk in that level of understanding of God's gifting for us. Um, there's a song that I've heard over the years, I'm next in line for a blessing. 
Well, I'm going to show you a scripture this morning that absolutely attests to that. And not just you're in line for a blessing, but the point is that you might not qualify for a <laughs> You know, if, if <clears throat> we would check out your qualifications, your holiness, your righteousness, your this, your that, you don't qualify for a blessing. I don't qualify for the particular blessing that God has um, um, catching up to me. It says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. But at one point, goodness and mercy shall not just follow you, but goodness and mercy and the favor of God catches up with you. Amen? It overtakes you. And, and this morning, I want to take a moment to show you that God qualifies you for the blessing on Calvary. This is the Lenten season or um, the season of resurrection, you know, the Easter season. <clears throat> and remember, by the way, Easter is not, it is not really a Christian. Um, and don't, sh don't throw stones at me now. Easter is not really a Christian holiday. <laughs> yes, many years ago, hundreds or thousands of years ago, maybe hundreds of years ago, <clears throat> it was appropriated by one of the leaders of the church. <laughs> Um, and it got assimilated in our, in our um, celebrations. But uh, we are looking at it from God's um, perspective, not from the pagan perspective from which it came. And so this morning, though, the, the song that I was, I'm going to play it again at some point, but the song was an Easter song, um, or what we call an Easter song. And, uh, and I want us to embrace the season, know that Calvary's cross was something that destined us for victory, for success, for prosperity, for a new life in Jesus Christ. You have been chosen for a blessing. Amen? And so let, let's take a look at the scripture after we pray. Um, turn to 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. Now back, this is Old Testament. Old Testament, 1 Kings rather. Um, chapter 17, Jitty Johnson Holiday. Good morning. <laughs> good morning, Brother Marcus. I saw that you got on earlier. Um, good morning, everyone. <coughs> Across the world. Father, we thank you this morning for your word, for the blessing that it is to know you, for the revelation and the understanding, Father, that we have of you. Father, for the situations of life that has caused me, Father God, to dig deep into the word. And Father, when I've been down, the word has lifted me. Father, when I've been up, the word has kept me. Father, when I've been challenged, the word has given me victory. When, Lord God, things assail my life, the word, Father God, upholds my hands and keeps me in perfect peace. I thank you when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God lifts the standard of the word against the challenges that come because of the enemy's assaults. Father, I thank you this morning that there is no God that loves us like you do. There's no God, Lord God, that is sovereign and Lord God, no one that we can call the Alpha and the Omega, no one that we can declare as the, the beginning, the end, the ancient of days, no one that reveals himself in all the various aspects of his being. Jehovah, our healer, Jehovah, our victory, Jehovah, our righteousness, Jehovah, our peace. Father, there is no one just like you. And so this morning, Father, we thank you for the victory that comes in being chosen for a blessing. In the book of 1 Kings, my friends, in the seventh verse, chapter 17, 1 Kings chapter 17 and uh, verse 7, there begins a, 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 a part of a story. There's a man of God, and, uh, you know, he is going through a, a challenge. And as this man of God goes through the challenge, it says, is it Elijah, some time later, the brook, he was sent to a brook because he didn't have the wherewithal to eat, to drink. 
he had nothing available to him. The story is this, this story that I'm sharing this morning is not about him. Um, you know, he himself, as a man of God, was challenged. Um, the, you know, the enemy was against him to take his life. And he was running for dear life, you know. And uh, it says, um, again in verse 7, sometime later the brook that he was at that was providing for him dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. <coughs> it says, go, verse 9, verse 9 of First Kings chapter 17. And it says, Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. The next part of the verse is interesting. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. Now, this is an interesting verse because the widow did not receive a telegram. The widow did not receive a text message. The widow did not receive an email. And I'm going to do this again tomorrow in part. But the widow did not receive anything to tell her to prepare for the man of God in any way. <clears throat> and, and she was in dire, 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 let me say it again, dire, awful, you know, um, circumstances of life. Now, the man of God, he was in dire circumstances of life. So both of them were challenged at that point in time. This is, and I, I want to point something out with this scenario. There's always a double effect when God begins to do a work. Because you're going to see how the man of God is going to be blessed, but you're going to even see how the woman is also going to be blessed. Because there's something significant about someone that moves into God's territory. Amen? And, uh, you know, speaking of that, um, you, you think about the blessing. We, we think uh, how one-sided sometimes. We think very one-sided that we come and we do something and then we bless somebody. But we don't realize that on the heels of blessing someone, there is a blessing that's about to overtake us. It says in verse 10, uh, well, I told the woman, I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. Let me put it in my terms. I have given a widow there an opportunity to supply you with food. <clears throat> and this, this poor woman, as I said, did not receive the telegram from heaven. <laughs> hey, my God. Uh, she did not get, you know, a highlight. You know, nobody flew overhead and dropped um, a letter. So she does not know what's about to happen. Verse 10 says, so he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. So he saw this woman walking around gathering, you know, some sticks. And uh, you would wonder, what on earth is she doing? Obviously, ob a widow, by the way, meaning she does not have the ability to work, really. She does not have a man in her life. The culture of the day was that the man provided. And so he, he went there, he sees her, and he called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? Now, you would think, um, if many of us, um, if we were looking on the outside of this and see a man, an able-bodied man. Now, one of the things you must remember, whenever I read these stories and whenever I read these accounts, I should say, <coughs> excuse me, Whenever I've read them and prayed over them, it is really as if I've been there. My God. My God, my God. Um, and so, I, I, I want you to um, realize that, I want you to immerse yourself in this account. Amen? Just really immerse yourself in this account. Listen to what um, is going on now. It says, he called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may drink? So um, many of us looking at that would say, why doesn't the man get up and help himself? Doesn't he see that this woman is probably tired and she's just trying to do something maybe for her family? Why, why, why don't he leave her alone? Now, that's what many people would say. And that's what many people would say about ministers today, some ministers today. You know, why don't you leave the people alone? Don't you hear it? 
why don't you stop asking for an offering? Why don't you stop doing this? Why don't you stop doing that? Uh, you know, and so the thing is this, I want you to see what's going to happen because this man can be very easily criticized for what he just did. As verse 11 says, as she was going to get it, he called, and then he says, bring me, please, a piece of bread. How presumptuous. <laughs> oh, my God. How presumptuous is this man showing up in this place with this total stranger of a woman <clears throat> and begin to tell her, bring him water. Begin to tell her, bring me food. Come on now. <laughs> I, I mean, we can be extremely criticizing or critical of what this man, the prophet of God, just did. Verse 12. Now listen to what she said. As surely as the Lord your God, now this, notice she doesn't say the Lord, my God. So I want you to point, I want to point something out here. This woman knows, has no clue that she has been chosen for a blessing. She has no clue that God has rubber stamped her, that God has put and positioned her this day. Now, can you imagine? Can you imagine <coughs> you and I in this situation? You know, we don't know where the next meal is going to come from, which you'll see in just a moment. We don't know if we are going to die because we have no resources, no sources. We have no ability. We have no job. We have no opportunity. We have no one that really cares. We have nothing in, in Jamaican terms. In one of the Jamaican expressions is, Nothing, na, one. My God. <clears throat> Nothing is happening. But hold on a second. And don't read ahead. Come on. <laughs> I caught you. Um, as surely, verse 12, as surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread. Only, uh, and I want you to, if you have your Bibles, you might, you might be able to do this in your phones also. It says, I don't have any bread. Only only a, and underline that, a handful of flour in a jar, a handful of flour in a jar, and a little olive oil in a jug. So all she has, and she identifies it, I have a little um, flour in a jar, <coughs> and I have a little oil in a, in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and to make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and then that's the end. Can you imagine? 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 7. We are now at um, verse 12 I think. Amen? She says, hey, I have given up. I have nowhere else to go. I have nothing else to do. Uh, my resources are limited. I just have the last of the last of the last. I don't know where else to go. But she doesn't realize that God has handpicked her for a blessing. This man of God that has shown up. This, this, this man of God has shown up in purpose and in God's direction to give this woman an opportunity to step into a realm of absolute favor with heaven. <clears throat> Will she say yes? Will she agree? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> uh, uh, Sister Coleman said she said that the first time she read it. <laughs> Uh, the man of God was really presumptuous. Amen. <clears throat> Sister Coleman, that's the reality. When we look at things, you know, with our natural eye versus our spiritual eye. Uh, and she says again in verse 12, I have just what? And I want to emphasize it. A handful. <clears throat> excuse me. I have a handful of flour and I have a little oil in a jug. And I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself. You know, in Jamaica, sometimes what we do, um, we have a little coal stove or we get wood. Um, I remember one time our gas, the gas tank that we had uh, on the weekend, it had run out. 
and the boys um, that lived with me, they were preparing Sunday dinner after church, and so there was no gas, and so I, I think it was Kimar, um, Kimar Smith, Kimar and the others, and Kelly and them, what they did, they went and got wood, and they got some stones in the backyard, and they and they, they um, lit a fire, and they put the pot on the fire. Man, the pot was black after that, <laughs> I mean, with the soot and the smoke. But they ended up going outside and making a fire. This is what this woman is getting ready to do. She doesn't have gas. She doesn't have any of the nat things maybe that would be available then. She had to go and find some little kindling to create a fire to cook her meal. And then, as she says, she's ready to die because... There is nothing after that. Um, how many of you are, are really, at some point in time, you've been on your last rope, last edge, last, you know, the last place in your life. You don't know where else to go. You have no other opportunity. You can't do anything else within your power to deal with the situation. This is where this woman was. But she didn't realize she was chosen like you are. Verse 13 says, Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. You notice he immediately tells her because it is obvious to the man of God that she is now fearful of what the next step is for her and her child. She is in fear because she has nothing going for her. But he immediately tells her, um, get rid of fear because fear and what's about to happen in your life they will not go together. They cannot live together. Go home, he says, and do as you have said. But he says, first, make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and, br and bring it to me. She, he didn't even want to go home with her. He's telling her, you go do the work and then bring it back to me and then make some for yourself and your son. What an incredible man of God. Wanting to take the last, Sister Jackie, Brother Marcus, wanting to take the last out of the woman's mouth, <laughs> off the woman's table. What an incredible man of God that doesn't have a clue <coughs> that this woman, and she, but she said it, but he doesn't have a clue. He doesn't care about the woman, we would say. And her needs, he keeps telling her, and he does not even want to go. He's going to give her the job to go do it and bring it back. My God. <clears throat> um, bring it back to me and make something for yourself. And, and I wonder in her mind, she said, you know, man of God, you know, you might be a prophet because you look like you're dressed like a prophet. But didn't you hear what I just said? I don't have anything. <laughs> I just have a little bit of stuff just for me and my son. Where do you come off telling me to go make some for you first and then make some for myself and my son? He says, I don't have enough. But hang on a second now. Um, he said, <clears throat> verse 14, For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Now, I want you to remember what I asked you to underline earlier. You remember she said she had a, in verse 12, she said she had a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I want you to see now what the man of God is about to prophesy, to superimpose the will of God, to superimpose the plan of God, to superimpose God's view of her situation. Uh, and you see, the prophetic utterance of men and women of God your own prophetic utterance over your situation changes the paradigm of that uh, situation, changes the dimension of that situation into God's prophetic utterance. Listen to what this man is going to say. Verse 14. For what? For this is what, not Elijah says, <clears throat> this is what, not, you know, brother so-and-so says, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The jar of flour. Now, she said a handful. Notice he changes it and he says that jar does not have a handful. He says that jar is full. <laughs> hey, my God. 
will not be used up and the jug of oil. He has absolutely reversed what she said. I, I mentioned some time back that your, your miracle is in your mouth. And in this case, there is a miracle that's about to take place, but the miracle will be a sustained flow of provision. It will be a sustained flow of God's answers. Gail, this is such a tremendous um, word from heaven that it will change the lives of people around you. <clears throat> it will absolutely immerse them, in a, to me, in a dance of victory because God has rubber stamp. God has looked over everyone around in that community, in the community of Zarephath, and wherever Elijah was coming from, from the brook, he had looked at everyone and he handpicked a woman that was about to die, a woman that was about to lose everything. She was about to probably be homeless and, and then she would have nothing else left handpicked for a blessing. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain in the land. There was a drought, um, obviously, and actually it was Elijah himself that said that there would be no rain and for some three, three plus years there was no rain in the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. Um, she went away and she did as Elijah had told her. I, someone said it just now. Obedience, obedience, obedience is critical, a critical factor in receiving the blessing of God. Listen to this. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. And then the statement of the scripture, verse 15 so there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar, verse 16, not the handful, because now the statement that she made has been modified with God's authority and God's power. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. My God. My friends, did you see this? The prophet of God spoke a word. And it was then incumbent upon the Lord, the majesty of heaven, to watch over his word and to perform it. He put the word in the prophet's mouth. And this morning, the word of God is that your jar your jar of flour, notice what I just said, I didn't say your handful. You may have just two or three or four dollars in your, in, your, in your wallet right now. You may just have <coughs> just enough to satisfy you and your son for the today, like this woman or your family. But God has chosen you for a blessing. The Lord is releasing in your life today something that um, you, you didn't anticipate, you, you couldn't work for, you couldn't make happen even if you tried. But he saw your need and he understood your heart and he said, don't fear because your jar, your little bit, um, I think it was Sister um, um, Lemond, Donar, uh, yeah, Sister one of the sisters just said, little is much when God is in it. Now, little, little becomes not just much, little becomes an abundance, an abundant supply when obedience, because if she was not obedient, there would not be much. There would not be abundance. You know, John 10.10, 10, it says, I've come that you might have life and that to its fullest. Abundant life is what God has promised. And this woman of Zarephath, in obedience to what the man of God said, this presumptuous man of God who comes and says, use up what you have for me first and then take care of yourself afterward. But what he was doing was giving her an opportunity to sow. Oh my God. 
Did you see that? He was giving her an opportunity to sow. Because in Genesis, in I think the last chapter of the book of Genesis, it says, um, seed time and harvest in the earth will never cease, spiritually and naturally. And so the opportunity that has been given to this woman in sowing has yielded a tremendous benefit for her and for her family. And also on the other side, you remember, remember I said that there's always a double edge to God's blessing. What do I mean? The prophet of God was blessed, but the woman of God was also blessed. My God. <laughs> Brother Marcus, do you, do you see that, my, my friend? Um, how the Lord will turn things around. How the Lord will change a, a no into a yes. How the Lord will ta change little into much. How the Lord will bring abundance for, in scarcity. There was another man of God. Um, it says, you know, in, in a time of famine, he had one hundredfold increase. Everyone else was experiencing um, famine in their land. But he had a 100% increase. You have been chosen. You have been chosen. Are you ready to believe God? Are you ready to take, my God, <laughs> to take God at his word? Do you remember what the verse said? Verse 14. And I think, Gail, you emphasized this verse. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The little you have in your pocket is much. The little you have in your bank account is much. The little you have as a resource and opportunity is by far greater than you can ever imagine. So when you said, I have only a little bit of flour, just for myself and my son, or when you said you have only a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of oil um, for yourself, I am telling you what God says. For the Lord your God says you have a full jar of oil. The Lord your God says you have a full barrel of meal. And so listen to what God has said. Whose report will you believe today? Whose answer will you take a hold of today? This is your season for a blessing. This day begins to declare that you are blessed, that God has purposed to give you everything that pertains to life, that pertains to, your, to the, godliness, the godliness of your character and your nature, and this is the beginning of a new season of life for you. Like this woman of Zarephath. She was probably never the same again. She probably believed God in ways she never believed before. You know, it doesn't really say that this woman of Zarephath, um, it doesn't say that this woman of Zarephath was in church or she knew God or whatever because when she met the man of God, she says, your God. She didn't say my God. <laughs> so there is not a self-identification with a relationship with the God of Elijah. However, she was obedient to the prophet of God. Will you be obedient today? Will you hear what the Lord says? In whatever opportunity he presents to you, will you be obedient today? And will you take advantage of the blessing like this woman of God, this woman, uh, after the fact, I'm sure a woman of God, when she saw what the Lord did. <laughs> Amen? <clears throat> but don't fear. You know, you might be at the edge of the cliff, but all of a sudden you're going to see ground appear before you. You might be at a place where, you know, you don't know where those funds are coming from, you know, for that mortgage payment, you know, for that tuition payment. Whatever it is that's facing you for that, um, you know, utility bill, whatever it is that's facing you today, you may not know where the answer is coming from, but the answer is coming. The answer is not just coming like the woman. Um, the answer was right there, sitting with her and talking with her, and it was the man of God. Amen?
my God. I want you to walk in God's blessing today. I want you to talk about the blessing of God. Every opportunity you get today, tell somebody <coughs> about the goodness of the Lord in your life. So into the atmosphere of your life, the word of faith about God's goodness. And I want you to expect a miracle. Amen? And then after the mir miracle, expect a flow. Expect a divine flow into your life, into your circumstances. Mighty God. This morning I pray, you know, for a little young lady in Port Maria, Abigail. Um, we know we have Ava, we have Addie, we have now Abigail, and we have, you know, several others. There, there is a man that um, I also want to lift up in prayer this morning. Um, he was um, yesterday... Uh, I, well, yesterday I saw the note, but what happened was that he, you know, um, there was a fire and he attempted to rescue his children. And in rescuing his children, um, he burnt his lungs. Amen. Um, his last name is Guthrie. Um, Kevin Guthrie. And I had I put it, um, I, I made a note of it on my phone. Kevin Guthrie. And he's shown here. Um, in ICU because he, his lungs were burnt and so they said he's going to be in ICU for quite a while I, I want us to lift up Kevin Guthrie this morning and, uh, and the ones that I just mentioned um, don't forget our, our little boy over there in Kingston um, and uh, you know Micah Don Micah and, uh, and then all the others that have asked you to pray or uh, they've asked us um, generally to pray. You know, let's lift them up in prayer this morning. We pray, you know, for Kevin's lungs that, you know, there is, you know, uh, a, a miraculous move of God in the membranes of his lung walls. Um, that the burning that took place would be arrested and that there would be a significant and immediate restoration of the lining of his lungs and, uh, and any opportunistic um, infections, um, anything like pneumonia um, and those kinds of things are arrested and will not occur in his physical body as he recuperates. Amen. <coughs> I thank you, Father, that Kevin's family walk in faith. I thank you that the children were rescued from the fire. I thank you for those around him, Lord God, that you prepare for them and you provide the resources mm -hmm. necessary to carry them through this situation. I thank you this morning, God, for Abigail in Port Maria. I thank you for surrounding her, Father, with a host of heaven. And I thank you, Father, for protecting her mind, her heart, and her life in all that she does. I thank you, Father God, for delivering her, Father God, from the things around her that would seek to destroy her. I thank you for extricating and severing her, Father, from any evil <coughs> and untoward connection, Father, that has, Father, been established in her life. Father, we take a stand and we contend for her destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, my God. Yes, Sister Lois, give him new lungs in Jesus name you see that's do you realize that that is like for Jesus I mean he was ready to give his life for his child my God <laughs> he was ready to give his life for his child and so this morning father I thank you for those new lungs <clears throat> I thank you for the new heart new mind father and just the newness of life a new fresh wind and breath of life for these, Father, your children. My friends, you have a wonderful day. This recording may not, uh, I might leave it up, but um, remember that there's a very, um, there's a significant gap, I think, in the beginning because the music was not playing. So just jump over that. I'll make a note of that. You know, um, jump into where you need to go to hear the rest of it. But I suggest that you listen to this again. Share it. Because somebody needs to hear this. 
as they might be on their last leg like this woman of Zarephath. But God has chosen them for a blessing. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.